No, that's fine. Hello, and today we've got David Gold, our broke midfielder. Hiya, David. How are you doing today? I'm well, buddy. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Let's good. start off. What is your first memory of playing football? My first memory? Um, going back years now. Um, it would have been when I was about, I must have been about four or five years old. Um, I was just around the local park with a team called Adina Hibs. Oh, um, yeah. And, and to be honest, I don't think it was actually like, I wasn't actually part of the team. What it was was just a thing put on for the community where like all the kids in the scheme would just go around and play football mm. around the park. So that was my hook, if you like. Um, and it was not it was good fun. So uh, that that would be my earliest memory. Who was the first professional club you signed for? The first professional club was Hibs. Was it was it a standout game in the scouted year? How did you, how did you get scouted? No, back then, what I'd, I'm not too sure if they still do it now, but back then what they used to do was, I was about eight years old when I joined them, so at that time they used to hold like training sessions for, it used to be about 50, 60 kids, uh, and it would be like two or three players from every club across the city, and they would all, they would all go to this training, and so you'd turn up and it was just, it was just games really, there wasn't much training involved, to mm-hmm. be honest, uh, at that time I thought I was at Hibs, I was a Hibs player, but I probably wasn't in hindsight. Um, mm. And then gradually, as the sort of years went on, months went on, the the numbers just got narrowed down. Yeah. What was your first game? Can you remember your professional debut? My first professional debut was actually for Queen's Park. I was on loan from Hibs uh, and it was Peterhead away. Your head away, did, I'm sure it was. Did you score? No, I never scored. Um, didn't score very many, but uh, we, we played well that game, actually. We were very unlucky, and I'm sure if memory serves me right, Peter Heed won the league that year. Uh, I think we lost 2-1. We went 1-0 up, and then oh. lost two eight goals. Staying on the subject of goals, what would you say has been your best goal? My best goal? Um, mm-hmm. My Best goal would have to be probably my goal against Hearts, and it's purely because not because the goal was brilliant, just because I'm actually a Hearts fan, and it was at Tynecastle, so I was open to scoring. So I would probably say that one. But in terms of quality of goals, um, I scored quite a decent goal last year actually. Um, that was uh, my first touch of the game against Dylan Albion. Mm. It was good play for the team. Uh, and I made a sort of late run. And I think I scored just fair outside the box. So that was that was a good goal. <laughs> what would you say is the best stadium you've played in? You mentioned would, your heart's fan. Would it be Tynecastle or? I enjoyed that, obviously, because it's Tynecastle. Mm-hmm. And I had a season ticket there for years. So to go and play... To go and play somewhere where you supported for, for so many years uh, was is obviously good. Um, but for in terms of actual stadium, I played at uh, Ibrox um, in a youth cup game, uh, and well, you play against Queens Park at Hamden. I played for mm-hmm. Queens Park as well, so I think probably Hamden would have to be it. Mm. What are the best and worst kits you've ever worn? The best and worst kits. Um, I've been quite fortunate, actually. I've not really had many shockers. But I think for the worst kit, I'd probably say my kit at Berwick Rangers. Not right. because it looked that bad, but probably because I was just a, a young, skinny guy at the time. Not that I'm much bigger now, but the strip to them was never, it wasn't a quite tight fit. <laughs> so it was, it was always dead baggy on me. So I looked a mess. Um, so that would probably be my worst. My best kit would be, I really liked the Arbroath away kit last year, the white one. So that yeah. would be my best. Who would you say has been the best teammate you've had? The best teammate? Yeah. Well, I've had loads. Um, loads of good ones. But I'm going to go for Michael McKenna. He is my teammate now. Um, we're very close. He's a good mate of mine. We share the car um, to and from training and games. So, I would say Mikey. Who's, who would you say is your worst teammate for playing pranks and stitching you up, that sort of thing? 
Uh, it doesn't really happen too often. Um, as much as you think, not really in the part-time environment. Yeah, uh, right. Because you okay. know it's not like you're, you're there every day. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're there to just go train and um, play your game at the weekend. So mm-hmm. it would probably have to be from when I was younger. Uh, and it never really happened to me. I was probably involved with it as well. But the lad, Danny Hanlon, Daniel Hanlon, he's at yeah. Edinburgh City. Mm-hmm. Um, he was always a bit of a wider. Him and the boy, Ross Caldwell, the two of them were a bit of a double mm-hmm. act. You had to, you had to be aware of what they were up to at all times. What sorts of stuff would they do? Ah, I've seen them cutting holes in jeans and <laughs> just, just do stupid stuff. They're always doing stupid stuff, winding folk mm. up, um, changing cut around and doing all that sort of thing. Who would you, who would you say has been the best player you've swapped shirts with, um, or have you ever swapped shirts? I've not actually. Um, no, nah, it's. It doesn't really happen in the Scottish mm, game, yeah. I think, that much. Um, mm-hmm. I got Sam Nicholson's top from Harps because he's a good oh, friend yeah. of mine. Yeah. So um, my dad had my dad had voted that. He's a big Harps fan. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't a case of swapping shirts. He just gave me his shirt just for, just yeah. for my dad. Um, it wasn't like he wanted my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> um, what would you say has been your best moment playing football? Obviously, you won the league with our bro recently. Yeah, um, I'd have to say one of those two days. Um, the the first time, so we won League Two, having been like 13 points behind, I think it was, and we won it on the last game of the season. Uh, the helicopter was above the pitch and dropped off the trophy. Um, so that was obviously um, a top moment. But uh, like you said, we won League One, um, so a tougher league. And we actually led that league from start to finish, which no many teams go and do that. So that was a mm-hmm. that's a big one, that one. You set up the Golden Grey Academy. What was your intentions with that and what how what what does it do? Uh, my intentions really was it was just something that I enjoyed actually doing. Um when when I started it myself and Ross, my partner, um both of us played played the game still and we, we still worked as well um, so it was just something we actually enjoyed doing um, the area that that I'm from um, there's loads and loads of quality loads of really good players but mm. sometimes it's a lack of opportunity I think um, I was quite fortunate that I got some opportunities but there's yeah. loads and loads of good players that maybe didn't get that sort of opportunity so it's about trying to help those kids mm-hmm. um, but just try and keep as many as many kids active as possible um, throughout the football. That's what that's what the aim is. Who would you say has been the best player you've played against? There's been loads. Um, right, okay. If I was to say youth career, it would be Raheem Sterling. Oh, right. Um, well, played against Raheem Sterling for Liverpool. Um, he was he was quality, obviously top top player now. But if you're talking mm-hmm. senior football, I'm going to say John McGinn. Yeah, obvious one. Stand out. I'll say John McGinn because he's absolutely flying mm-hmm. right now, and he's always been a top player. So I'd say John yeah. McGinn. Who would you say has been the best manager you've had in terms of developing you as a player? De- developing me as a player. Um, I would say the best manager is quite an obvious one, actually. It's, it's my gaffer now, Dick Campbell. Um, he took over our team where we were not doing so great. We were second bottom, if I remember right, of League Two. And you can only you can only have to look at what we've done since since he's been in charge, the, the players he's added and sort of quality he's got from the players he already had. Mm. Um, to see that, that he knows his stuff. Just finally, just a couple of quick fire ones to end on. What was the last game you played before the COVID shutdown? The last game I played was actually against Dunfermline at Gayfield. And just finally, when was the last time you had to pay for a ticket to go to a football match? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, I didn't get the, the opportunity to go to many football games anymore. 
because of their play. Yeah. So that's quite hard. Actually, the last game I went to was Man United versus Watford. Oh, right, yeah. That was the last that was the last ticket I paid for. Right, David. It's been a pleasure having you on. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers for that. Bye. I enjoyed that. Yeah, thank you.